start my explanation. I can pause any time. Okay, okay, good. So um, today we'll start with the class notebook basics. Um, here's a table of content, but it's the same as was in the description of the um, the session today. So, um, so Google um, versus OneNote. I mean, mainly the decision will be made by your school, I would think, because it depends very much if your school is a Google school or OneNote uh, or a Microsoft school, because for using either system, you need to really be signed up as a whole school because all your students be, will need to have either Microsoft accounts or Google accounts. So I don't think you can really um, mix or mix or match the two, um, but obviously you can change from one to the other. Um, so here's an overview of what Google looks like. So there are ways of structuring your resources in Google as well. But I think in OneNote, it is much better because you can have way more information on one page. Um, you can have more kind of subdivision. Um, and it has the big advantage over Google Classroom that you can see what the students are doing while they're doing it. While I think in Google, the students do their work on their own and then they send it into you or they upload it to you and then you can look at it, but you can't see it in the stages in between. So that is much better, better in Microsoft, I would say. Okay, so uh, one thing that confuses many people when they first start with this is what is OneNote and what is Class Notebook and are they the same thing? So the easiest way of understanding is really if you think of Word, so you have a document within Word, but you could also open that document in other programs, for example, but Word is the program that you use to um, create it. And the same with PowerPoint, so within PowerPoint, so you have presentations, and then within OneNote, you have your class notebook. Okay, so OneNote, oops, uh, OneNote is the program program around it, while the class notebook is the file that you have in it, which you share with your students. And there are several different ways of access accessing your um, class notebook, which I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so another way of thinking about it is that, so it, sometimes people are not quite sure how do Teams and OneNote go together. So do you need to have Teams to use OneNote or the other way around? Um, the answer is no, really. You could use Teams um, without note, uh, OneNote, but they work really well together because obviously they're both Microsoft programs and they're made to work together. So Teams is basically your classroom, which you use to communicate. You can send messages, you can do video calls and so on. And then OneNote um, or your class notebook within OneNote is the student's exercise book in your classroom. Um, so before lockdown, my students were using OneNote in class, in the actual physical classroom, um, in face-to-face -face lessons because they all have iPads. So you could use OneNote if you've got computers in school, they can use it on there. But now during um, lockdown, it makes sense to use it with a key Teams call. But if you're using, for example, um, Skype to communicate, you can still use OneNote, that's, that's fine. Can I just say there's one question here, which mm -hmm. is not a sick question at all, that someone said, is OneNote part of the Microsoft 365 package? Yes, okay. it is. You can get it, um, so you can have your own personal OneNote for free, which I don't know if you need to have the subscription to 365, um, but those ones, I don't think you can share with your students. So for that, your school needs to be signed up to the whole deal, I think. Um, yeah. And then you don't need to pay for it. If, if they've got, if they're signed up to, to Microsoft as a school, then it will be part of the package. So there's no extra subscriptions or anything to it. So Ruth has said, so my students will have OneNote if they have Teams. <clears throat> yes. Well, they, yeah, they will be able to use it through Teams, which is my next bit I come to. So yes, they can, and they can download all the software for free, but then to access your notebooks that you're creating as a teacher, they will need to use their school accounts, their, their school Microsoft accounts to get to it. And I think but lots actually... of people are using it just as their own person. I mean, you could just use it to um, 
collect your recipes at home or students at university use it for their notes. So um, you can have individual ones as well. And I think probably, and th I think the point that Adeline makes is important that this whole thing about Office 365 and what you've got, they'll have little icons, but it's up to the mm. school to decide which of those icons appear. So if there's something that you do want to use and it's not there, that would be something that you would take up with your school. So don't don't mm. expect everything definitely to be there. Mm. Yeah. So one, one thing that confuses a lot of people at the beginning when they start using Teams and OneNote is that there are basically five different ways of accessing your class notebooks, which seems quite a lot, but it's just kind of evolved over time, I guess, there are different versions of it and different ways of doing it. So I'll show you the five different ways. The good news is whatever you create on one of those will appear on all the other ones. So if you create a page with exercises in Microsoft Teams in your class notebook, and then the students open it on their iPad, they will see the th same thing. Or if the students are writing on their iPad, no matter which of these versions you're going to use, if you're in your browser view or in the desktop app, the old one, the new one, any of them, you will see what your students are writing as they're writing it. So literally as if you're looking over their shoulder. I mean, it depends a little bit on their internet speed, um, if they're connected, how fast your speed is and so on. But for me, there's normally just a few seconds delay and then I can see what the students are writing if they have a good enough connection. Okay, so there are the five different ways. The first one looks like this. So this is from within Teams. So it's bi already built into Teams. And when you first set up your class notebook, you should do it through Teams if your school is using Teams. But I'll show you that uh, step by step in a minute. Um, you can't really create your own account on Teams, so you need to have a school account for that. Only, only schools can be organizations that have Teams, as far as I know. You can be part of several teams, so if you maybe work in two different schools, or I'm, for example, a, a part of the Microsoft team as well, so other organizations can invite you, um, even though I don't work for Microsoft, by the way, um, but just for people who are interested in, you can join other teams as well. Um, but most of the time you will just be in your school team. Okay, then um, the second version, which I think is the best one, is the OneNote for Windows 10 desktop app. And you can just download this for free in the um, Windows store on your desktop or on your laptop. I've got the link in there. So if you've got the PowerPoint um, downloaded, you can find the link there, but otherwise just go into the um, the app store on your on your desktop and type in OneNote for Windows 10 and you can download this. It doesn't take very long. OK, so this one gives you kind of the most options, I would say, and uh, the most space to work in. Then um, this one is what it looks like if using it. someone has got their camera on. It's a bit echoey. Sorry to know. Yes, um, you turn your mics off, otherwise I can yeah. take everybody's mic off and make it so that they... Yes, please. Right. If I just do that, if we can just pause. Let me just pause this recording a minute. Yeah. Pause. And I'm going to... What I'll do is I'll mute everybody, but then the co-hosts can unmute themselves, I think. So okay. I can just... Um... <clears throat> right. I'm always worried when I do this in case I mute the... So mute all... <laughs> Um, and I won't allow you to unmute yourselves and we'll allow you to unmute yourselves later. Is that okay? Right. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry, everybody. Okay. <laughs> okay. So um, if you are working on a device where you can't download the, um, the standalone app because you haven't got space or you don't have the permissions or whatever, um, you can also view OneNote through the browser app. So for that, you will need to have... Um, well, a 360 uh, office account. So if you go to office.com, log into your Windows account there, and then you've got all the different options for Word, PowerPoint, and so on. And there will be one for OneNote where you can open the, this version. 
um, which is also good. It's just the one before kind of gives you a bit more um, bit more space to work on. And I think it's also a bit faster if you have it installed on your computer. Um, because then it will work even if your internet stops working for a bit and so on, you will still be able to make changes to it and then it uploads it later. So I definitely recommend downloading that. But now we come to the next bit. Be careful, there are two versions of this. So there's still also the older version, which is called OneNote 216, which looks like this. So it has the tabs at the top instead of at the side, like here. So here's at the side, the other one is at the top. So that's how you can really quickly recognize which version it is. Some people prefer the older version. I actually liked using it for a while as well um, because it has a lot more options. Um, so it's up to you which one you want to use. The advantage of using the newer version is that it looks more like what the students are going to use. Um, so it might be easier for you to give them directions where to click or if you're sharing your screen, yours will look just like theirs if they're using it on an, uh, a mobile device um, or if they have the newer version and it looks more like the version that's built into Teams. So if you're a beginner, I would say start with the one that's called OneNote, so this one here, OneNote for Windows 10. Many computers, so if you buy a laptop that has already got um, Microsoft stuff installed on it, it probably already has it on there. You might just need to look for it. Um, but again, make sure that you've got the right version. Okay, so now we are at the end of the version. Resume the, resume the recording. Okie dokie. Okay, so um, as I said before, so Teams is the classroom and then OneNote or class notebook is your your exercise book within the, the classroom, so to speak. Um, so I'm going to go over into my actual Teams now um, and show you how to create a team and a class notebook. Um, you, uh, you can create it in OneNote, but at least in my school, it has to be created through Teams so it's stored on the school server. I don't know how it is in other schools. Did you yes, create yeah, yours through Teams? I think it has to be created in Teams for it to really yeah. work properly. I think otherwise it's a bit of a disaster. Yeah. yeah. Because I think the thing is to know that sometimes these things can be done standalone. You could just have a class notebook and be nothing to do with, with Teams. But schools, it's in their interest to create it within it because yeah. then it automatically yeah. updates all of your classes, doesn't it? People in there. You don't have to add students or take them away. Yeah. Sorry, I forgot I was still in the, in the wrong organization. Okay, so here I'm in my school team. So this is what my school has set up. Um, and in my school, we were lucky enough that the IT team has set up all the classes. And I think they could import it directly from the register. So if your school hasn't done that yet, it might be worth checking with your IT team if they can import your students. So you don't have to create it all manually yourself. But in case you need to, um, you go. Um, so in Teams, we've got our different icons over here. I won't go through all of Teams today because I'm focusing more on Class Notebook. But in the middle here, you've got all your Teams. And then on the right hand side, you've got the chat and so on. So. Um, here, um, let's say I want to make a new top team. So at the bottom, it says join or create a team. So I'll do this, um, create a team, yes. And in this case, I want a class. So the difference between them is that in a class, there's a teacher who has got more permissions and the students have can't see all of the areas. Well, if you create a staff notebook, then it means everybody has the same rights to get to everything. So we want a class. Um, we'll call it test class for now. Then I'm going to add some students to it. So it's important here, you see it says students and teachers. So this is where I decide which permissions they have. So if I'm co-teaching or if I want my head of department, for example, to be able to look at my book. So um, your head of department would, might want to do a book scrutiny even during lockdown. So you can add them as another teacher so they can see everything. But for now, it's just me. So 
I don't need to add myself, I just need to add my students. Um, and I've asked my colleagues who um, are going to be my students for this. Okay, so I'm adding Chloe and Mark and our assistant. There we go. Okay, so they are our three students now. Um, so they've all got school login. So I know their, their short code, but in your school, you might have to type in their whole email addresses. So somewhere from your IT team, you need to get their Microsoft account names. Okay, so I add them. Yes. Uh, mm. Why is it not letting me? I think I've added them now. There we go. Yes. Okay, so now I've got my team ready um, and I've got different areas here. So in posts is where I can write something, write a little message and they can answer to me. Um, I can, in the corner, I can start a meeting. So this is when I do a video call. I can also schedule classes and so on, but I won't go into this. Files, you can upload uh, Word documents or whatever to share. But the main thing we want to look at is class notebook. So at the top there, you go to class notebook and then it says set up a OneNote class notebook. Yes, that's what we want to do. So this book will be linked to this team only. So only students and teachers who are in this test class will be able to access it and copy things and so on. Okay, so you can now either start a blank notebook or if you've got already one started and you want to use a similar folder structure, then you can do it from existing notebook as well. So let's go with the blank one. So at first it just gives you an overview what different sections will be automatically created. So we can't really change anything here. So we go to next. And then here's the interesting part where it asks you what folders or what sections they're called here you want in your students' books. So it gives you those four, but it is recommended to change them. But as I said later on, I'll show you lots of different examples of how different people do it. So this means that every student will have those four sections at the moment. So instead you might want to call them uh, unit, unit one and unit two and so on, um, depending on what your structure is, or you might want to call it um, classwork, grammar, um, homework and so on. You can add more to them later on as you go through the year, but weirdly, you can't delete them. So it's better to start off with less and then add more as you go along. You can rename them, but you can't really delete them. They will always kind of be in the background and be a bit annoying. So yeah, start with, low, start with less and then add to it. Okay, so I'm just keeping it like this now. And then I click create. And now it's getting my notebook ready. So this will take a few minutes. Um, and because of that, I've already got one here. So this is my dummy team has the same people in it where I've already created this notebook. Um, so if I go there. Okay, so once your notebook is created, it will look like this. It's still loading. And you might think, oh, I've only got this one kind of worksheet here and I have to put everything on there. But no. The magic happens, as um, Helen said in her PowerPoint, when you click on this little button here, so the bookshelf button, because that's where all your things are. So now you can see all the different areas there are in your notebook. And I just say as well, that yeah. that's something which I find is the biggest thing that you have to tell the students as well, because yeah. you're, you're met with that and you just don't know what to do next. So yeah. to me, that's not a very intuitive thing to know to keep yeah. it there, it does, mm. to me it doesn't say navigation, but a mm. really, really big thing, if you're new to this, is to know mm. about that, that little yeah. picture, the left-hand side. Yeah. So I could carry on doing things here within Teams, but the screen is quite small because I've got all my Teams to the side. You can make it a bit bigger by using this arrow at the top here, so at least then it gets rid of the extra stuff. 
So now I can work here, but I think I'm going to go over into OneNote now. So into my standalone app to open the same notebook in there, just because it works a bit smoother. There's more options and so on. And here it gives me that option in here to say open and browser, or I can just open it up down there. So maybe let's go through here. Are there any questions about this for now? So setting up the team at the beginning. UK, I'm opening this in my desktop app now. So uh, I've got a bit more space. So all done, I can close this now. Okay, well. Okay, so um, I'm in the same book here now. Um, so in the book here, so now it looks the same as any other place. So you start on the, this welcome page. And so it, there are four, or like, uh, well, there, there, are, there are five areas really. So on the left-hand side here, you've got your list of sections and subsections. So if you think this is like an exercise book or a big folder, so this is kind of your list of the different folders that you have. And then within each folder, for example, here in my collaboration space, so this is the name of my folder or my exercise book. Within that, I've got different dividers, so different kind of areas. Um, so for example, here in the student, this is now the student's folder. So I've got my stu uh, student Antonio, and he's got those four sections uh, that I created earlier. This is a different notebook, so it doesn't say unit one, unit two, because in this one, I've just went with the kind of pre-made titles. But in my real classes, as you will see later, it has different names. So each of the three students in my class has all these different uh, dividers in their books. And then in each divider, I can have lots of different pages. At the moment, it's empty, but I could have an unlimited number of pages in each one. So there are can I, can I just say, pages, I like, dividers, I like, and folders. Basically. I really like your idea of the dividers because sometimes that's confusing where people feel they mm. can, why can't I write anything into it? So I, mm. like, I think they ought to rename them dividers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, they have this little symbol, which I guess is meant to look mm. like a divider in a, in a folder. Yeah. Um, but in OneNote, they're called sections. And these ones are called pages. And the ones with the little arrow next to them, they're called uh, section groups because they are a group of several sections. And you can create all three types. So you can create new section groups, you can create new sections and you can create new pages. But the main thing you will do day to day will be creating pages. Just like in your classroom, you would give out worksheets and so on. Um, okay, so, uh, and then over here, obviously that's the page. And as soon as I change the title, so let's say I put in my date today, uh, lesson one, you can see it has straight away changed it over here in my list of pages. Um, so you just change it. You can sort them in different ways as well. So alphabetically or by date, which is quite useful. So it's easy to find. Um, you should probably think about it carefully, how you're going to name your lessons, because this is what the students will see. So it needs to make sense to the students. Um, and again, I show you a few examples. I mean, I name mine by um, with the date uh, and with some kind of name. And I've, I've started using kind of the same titles that I would use in my exercise book, but actually it's not that good. And I think it's a better way of naming the lesson by the lesson objective. So if the main focus of the lesson is um, the past tense, then it's probably good to, to call it the date and then past tense or lesson one past tense or some people name it by um, the unit they're in. So unit uh, module two, unit three, page five or whatever. So just, yeah, just like in your class, what kind of titles would you give out to the students? Uh, it already has an automatic date, automatic date, but you could write the date in, in your target language as well. 
And can okay. I say also you can remove yes. that date as well, so that if, for example, you're creating something which lots of oh, yeah. people in your department are going to use and it can confuse, you can just take it away. Ah, that's... can you? I didn't know that. How do you do that? <laughs> ah, you can like delete. That. <laughs> ah, nice. I didn't know that. <laughs> Very useful. <laughs> yes. Okay. I did it by mistake once, but <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and can if, I just say, if people yeah. would like to in the chat, because this is relevant, if you wouldn't mind, you know, if you're experiencing this and you've got mm -hmm. a way that you use, just write it in the chat now. So how would you name them? Okay. Mm. Yeah, uh, the pages you mean now. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to show the examples for different sections, oh, but yeah, how to name pages, there are different ways of doing it as well. Right. I mean, if you, I guess if you uh, number them, with the American date system, then it makes sense if you then sort them alphabetically, because then they will be in the date order. But um, yeah, you could also just sort them by date created, but it depends if you create them a long time in advance of your lesson, then it might confuse it a bit. So in your list of sections over on the left, you always have those five different sections, I think. So you've got the, the welcome area, which actually you don't really need. So you could just delete it. It's kind of just a landing place. So if you have a, um, an introduction to it for students, maybe, um, or you could just keep this page here, which kind of shows a little bit of an overview. But once the students know how to use it, really, you could delete it. Then you've got the collaboration space which then has other sections in it. So at the moment, it's just called using the collaboration space. But if I right click on it, then I can rename the section. So um, I always call mine working together because uh, it's a bit easier to understand for the students. So this area, whatever page I put in there, everybody can write on it. So every student can write onto it and every other student can see what they have written. So this is great if you're doing teamwork, if you're doing a big mind map that everybody can contribute to. Just keep in mind that there will be a little bit of a lag sometimes. So someone might start writing in a top left corner and someone else also starts writing in top left corner, not realizing it. And then suddenly both of them, both of the writing will pop up and be on top of each other and then hard to read and that's why it's quite good to have kind of a predefined layout like this one where you put in the students names mm -hmm. so each person knows where to write and they can still see each other so it's a bit like working with mini whiteboards basically so they can each do their little text one there one there and they can compare each other's answers or discuss um, each other's answers and so on okay then We've got the content library, again, which these are uh, some, um, some sections I've copied over from my year 10 class. And um, when, when I collected all the ideas from the other teachers, there are, again, different ways of using it. So the content library, um, the students can't write into it. So only the teacher can add things to it, can add pages to it, but the students can copy anything from there. So they could copy a grammar sheet or a vocab sheet from there into their own area and then they can write on it. So library is really the right word here. So they can kind of borrow the books, but they can't write into them straight away. So I personally only have things that I would have as reference material. So I've got my, my grammar sheets that they can look up. I've got my, my different vocab lists in there that they can look up and so on. But I don't have any of my worksheets in there. But some people keep all their worksheets in the content library as well. Then you've got the teacher only area. And if you've got the newest version of OneNote, it should um, create it automatically. In the past, you used to have to create this separately, but now it always comes with it. So teacher only, as the title says, only the teacher can write in it and only the teacher can see it. So this is the place where you want to keep your answers uh, for the task or the, the mark scheme that you don't want the students to see for the test. Um, I personally also keep all my lesson preparation in there. 
So any page that I create, I create in the teacher only area and then later copy it out to the students. And then we've got so the three students and each of the students can only see their own. So Antonio would not see CHS and MAN. The only thing he could see is everything at the top here. So the collaboration space, the content library and his own one. They are the ones he can see as a student, okay? And then he can write in all these sections. He can create new pages if he wants to, or he can write onto the pages that I've created for him. Um, but they have a lot of control of their own work, really, just like with their own exercise book. It's up to them if they want to color coordinate things or if they want to stick their sheets in certain places. Um, and if you think that this is really more like a folder and not so much like an exercise book, they can rearrange the pages as they want, as they, want. they can make extra copies of it and so on. But the nice thing is you can also do all this for them. So if your classes are very disorganized, um, you can sort out their folders if necessary. Hope how to open the book. So the class notebook, because that's what some of my, my colleagues were struggling with, especially if they start using notebooks on different computers. So if you open it on your school computer and on your home computer, the very first time on each device that you use it, you need to open up your books. So in the top right corner here, this is the name of my class notebook at the moment. It might just say your name at so-and-so and your school name. So for me, it says um, my notebook at Millfield School, but sometimes it would also say Julia at Millfield School or whatever your school is called. So, and then you need to click on it and scroll down to more notebooks. And then in more notebooks, it will show you any, any notebook that you've ever been part of basically. And you can open them all up. So you just click all the ones that you need um, well, I won't open them now. And then you can open them. And then once you've opened them on your computer, they will always be there. But if you've opened too many, and for example, at the end of the year, you don't need them anymore, you can just right click and say, uh, close this notebook. It does not delete it. So it's still there on the cloud somewhere, but it just doesn't show in your list anymore. So you could so for example, I've got some notebooks that are open on my school computer, but I don't use them during lockdown. So I don't need to I have them open on here. So I can just close them here, but they're still saved and I can open them again later when I when I need them. Okay. Oops, let's go out of this. Uh, where was I? In my dummy team. Here we go. Okay. Um, so now how about how about making well, shall I, shall I just show a quick uh, page, just yes, so you, people have an idea? About, are you going to show about adding a section or? Yes, but shall I just quickly show what Whatever a page looks like? Yeah. Um, just so, um, mm -hmm. but we won't go into too much detail. Okay, so unlike on a Word document or a PowerPoint, the pages are in, infinite. So in any direction, to the left, to the right, to the bottom, you can literally just scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll and they never end. So you could just keep adding and adding or if you want to put stuff to the side. So I could just drag this and go all the way, uh, make it bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, bigger, which is sometimes good if you want to have lots of things next to each other, like a vocab list and a, a text. It can sometimes also be uh, difficult especially if you have some items that have much bigger writing than others. So sometimes it's hard to get everything uh, to fit together. But most of the time, I think it's an advantage. So literally you can put everything on here. So you can write on it, you can draw on it, as you can see. So if you've got um, a touch screen or an, an iPad where you can scribble on it, you can do that. You can add pictures to it. Um, you can add um, you can add photos to it. So here I've got a photo of a piece of work. You can embed embed certain things, not everything, but some things like YouTube videos can be embedded. Quizlet can be embedded. Um, 
you can have links to other websites. Um, you can print worksheets onto this, which we'll come to later. And as you can see here, you can even print PowerPoint slides onto this. Um, and you can have beautiful rainbow pen. You can add audio recordings, everything. And as you can see, you can have everything on the same page if you want to. So you can have a really um, varied lesson with lots of different tasks where maybe they do a reading task first and then do a little listening and then do a little quizlet and then come back to another listening uh, reading task all on one page. And I think that's one of the big advantages of this compared to Shobi or Google Classroom where all these things will be in different files and you can't really see them at the same time. Okay, so now that you know what a page could look like, how you make stuff. So making a page is easy. So you just go to the bottom here and say add page and then you can write on it. You can uh, copy and paste on it and so on. Make a section. So if you just want to make a new section, for example, to your content library, so you just want it in this one area, you go to add a section. So let's say I want something for assessment. And can I just say, I just had, you, had you first yeah. of all highlighted, what did you, what were you in oh, yeah. you so, before you added the section? <laughs> yes, sorry. So first you need to decide, oops, no. Um, out of all your different kind of folders that you have in here, where do you want to put it? So collaboration space, if you want the student to write onto it, um, but all on one, on one sheet, so to speak, is a content library so they can look, but not touch basically. Well, no, they can touch it, but not write on it. Or do you want it to be hidden away, then put it in your teacher only area. Okay, so let's say it's something that we want them to be able to uh, refer to. So like an assessment area where, it tells them the mark scheme, for example, or it tells them um, when their next assessment is or something. So I've added it onto did there. You, did you so, have to yeah. first of all highlight one of the sections within it before you added the section? Um, in, it, yes, I think so. Yeah, you, yeah. It's I think you click on the one. Add, yeah, yeah, you click on one and then if you click yeah. add section, it will. So um, that's the important thing, you, or yeah. I found, you can't just okay. highlight content library, add section, it won't know where to go. And this, I, is, I think, is odd. You've actually got to click on one of the sections yeah. and add section. And that's counterintuitive to me because that's, yeah, that's true. You're adding yeah. something into that section, whereas you're not. Yeah, so that's true. Yes, that's true. <laughs> yeah, so you go into just anywhere, click, yeah. right click. Um, and right then, click uh, no, not right click, click, sorry, and then click at the bottom add yeah. section. Or you can right click, but it's got to be right clicking on an existing section to add another section within that group section. Yeah, so if you want to create um, a section group, you go down here where it says add section and right click on it. And then it gives you the option section or section group. So the difference is, wait, let me go back into my content. Um, content library, so new section group. Now within my content library, I've got a sub folder, so to speak, in which I can add more sections. So if I just put a few in here, yeah. so I can close this down or I can open it up to show them. So it's a way of having a hierarchy in, in your books. So my hierarchy at the moment is content library is the, the top level, then new section group is the second level and then new section one would be the third level so to speak yeah. and yeah? sorry could I, could I just ask people yeah. not to ask questions outside this because it is distracting i've had private messages from people saying it is distracting to them watching so if you could keep your questions just to do with this and we can deal with other things later on thank you ever so much for your understanding yeah um yes yeah, so most of the time you probably just need um, sections, but for example, um, for vocabulary, um, you might want to have several subject section if you, um, or um, for assess, well, let's say for assessments, you can have several subsections, one for speaking exams. So let's, uh, let's do this here. So we could call this one, 
uh, rename assessment uh, no, wrong way around assessment and then within there I make another group called uh, speaking and writing and so on and then within that speaking session I can, can then have lots and lots of pages one for pronunciation tips, one for the topics for the speaking exam, one for role plays, blah, 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 whatever I want to add. So just lots of um, hierarchies here, basically. But a good question from Anthony there about while yeah. we're talking about sections, can you add section groups to pupil? Areas? Yes, well, um, yes, I think you, mm, yes, I think you can. I can't remember, but um, I come now how to add more sections to the students. So let's say um, I've now realized I want all students to have a section called unit one. I could go into each one and create it separately, but that's a bad idea because A, it will take a long time and B, OneNote will not necessarily realize that they are all connected to each other. So what you need to do is go to, um, no, sorry, you go to the top, go to class notebook, so in the class notebook tab is where all your management of the notebook is really. I can go through what the different things are in a minute. Let's stick with distribute new section first. So I click on there. Ah yeah, here is also where you can distribute a section group. Okay, but let's stick with new section. So I want all my students to have a unit one folder basically. Uh, what? What's going on? Something weird. Come on, no active. Uh, ah, why is it doing that? <laughs> Sorry. New section group. Ah, now it's working. Not sure why this is happening. Okay, so now it's letting me do this. So I put in unit one, distribute. It takes a little bit. Okay, and now at the bottom it says distributed, so I can close this. And now if I go and look, so Anthony, uh, Antonio has, uh, no, he doesn't, hasn't quite appeared yet, but um, it should appear soon. He should have a, a unit one section. No? Demonstration you, effect. You no? want to show how you can make wrong. it sync, because that's quite a useful tip. If if it doesn't sync, you can force it to sync. Yeah. You want to how show do you, do? How you click right on the name of the um, notebook. I found that quite useful, and then it. Yeah. Ah, yeah. This is what sync. we need. We need these troubleshooting ah, okay. things. There you when the yeah, children, so when on the, the name, user, it's not there when you've distributed something. Mm. You need to from in in in. From experience, you need to check that they're on the internet <laughs> and then that they um, have stood like that. Let's try this again. I'm going a bit wrong here. Unit, let's call this on unit two in case the other one turns up in a minute. So, normally it's faster, but this one is a bit slow now. Sorry. No, no. Not turning up. Oh well. Let me try syncing again. Uh, no, up here. Sorry. Mm. Okay, I'll leave it for now. Hopefully, it will come up. So sometimes, if you close it and open it again, it works. Another one I found is if you change the order of things, like just drag the units around a bit and just change them, that also forces it to update it normally and it works with the pages as well if the pages don't appear um, just change the order of pages or just create a new page and delete it again um, and that kind of force forces it okay well we'll leave the section for now let's maybe get on to can can we just um, really bef before yeah. we go on julia yeah. if we can be absolutely yeah. clear about the difference between a section group yeah. a section and a page because some of the yeah. questions I can see it's still not so, clear so um, almost if you okay. collapse, collapse it all so we can just see the section groups yeah. 
I think this is really worth okay, getting let's right. Get, let's get rid of this one. So, <laughs> there we go. Yes, so now at the moment, you can only see section groups as they're called. So you need to think of them as the different folders you have in your class shelf. So one node is your classroom with a shelf full of uh, folders, basically. So I've got one folder, which is my library where the students can borrow things. Uh, one folder is my mark book, so to speak, where I keep my private things. And then I've also got a pile of the students' folders here. So Antonio's, uh, Chloe's and Mark's folders. Um, and I've got kind of my set of mini whiteboards, which is the um, collaboration space. And it's being really That's, clear they're actually section groups. And I think partly yeah, so these are section groups. always to be, when, especially when you're training as a, you know, when, when you're with your department. Mm. Um, to use the words that are in the on the screen. Yeah, so you could say it's a bit like having um, a filing cabinet or whatever, but it is a section group. Yeah, so these are section groups mm -hmm. within your notebook. So this is only the notebook dummy team JLM. So I could open another book like my school notes and then I suddenly have completely different sections in there because I've set it up differently. So this is just for that class. Okay, then now if I open my content library, within the content library, I've got these different sections. They're basically the, the subdividers. So and then you, and within if could, each- if you, if you could highlight yeah. vocabulary, because that was the question that someone asked about but vocabulary. Yeah. And they asked about the folders to the right, but they're not folders, are they? They're pages, so- Yeah, so each of these is a so page. So, so a little bit like a Word document, but it's, it, it's unending, so you can make it long if you want to. Yeah. In this case, it's just, yeah, just a walk up for that one topic, and then here's the next topic, and so on. Um, some other random stuff, a few colors. Um, but yeah, that's the, that's the lowest level of the hierarchy, basically, that mm -hmm. I've got my pages here. So I think, thank you. I think that was really just to almost going through those pages. It's showing, mm. if you like, page is like a file and then the section is like a folder. Yeah. And you can easily move them around. So you could just, if I wanted the colors, actually I want this in my assessments uh, or in my grammar section, let's say, I can just drag it and drag it over into grammar and bloop, it's, just, uh, it's appeared now here in grammar, but in vocab, it's it's gone now. So it's really easy to sort pages around. And you can always right click to uh, copy them. So if you want two copies, because you want it in another uh, book as well, um, but you can also use move, but maybe I'll come to that a bit later. Um, and you can delete the page, you can rename the page and so on. So uh, different things you can do with it there. Um, yeah. Uh, where was I? Um, shall I show the different layouts now or shall I carry on for now with how to distribute a page? Well, we were distributing, maybe I'll do that first. What do people want? Uh, layout? I suppose the layout is something which pages yeah. we can do another time, can't we? Okay. The, yeah. Probably the, the mechanics, the management. Yeah. Okay, let's right. go back. Are you all right to carry on? We're over the time, but are you all right, Julie? Oh, okay, sorry. Yes, I didn't realize. No, no, okay. it's you. Oh, definitely. Um, let's definitely go to that then. Okay, so uh, right, I'm going to be selfish into my own version first, and then I'll show a few other ones. So this is from my year 11 book. I'm not showing in the actual notebook because I don't want to show the names. So uh, I've taken out the names here. Okay, so in my case, <clears throat> um, in the collaboration space, I've only got that one folder, which has, um, you can't see it on here, but it, ha it just has that page with all the different notebooks so they can work together. In my content library, it really just has reference material. So for example, here you can see what's in the important information um, section, namely their passwords and introduction, their correction codes, and then I've got grammar, some speaking resources, and then for vocab, you can see I've made a section group within the content library, so I could split it up even more. So I've got the vocab one, which then has pages for the different topics. Uh, it also has 
bull cup organizers. And again, each um, topic will have a page in the bull cup organizer as well. Then I, I prepare all my lessons in the teacher only area because I don't want the students to be able to see it. So I've got all my different subjects sections in my teacher only area. So the different units that I'm doing with my year 11s plus some extra folders. So I've got assessments separately, my zigzag resources, which we bought in and um, any templates in a, in a separate one. So they're a little bit like if you have your document folders on your computer, like um, like this one here. So you've got your different structure in there. It's similar to that. And then within each unit, I prepare my lesson. So I create the page with the date and the title and so on, put all my things on it. And the student section, uh, have I got it on here? So this is what the student looks like. So at the top, it would normally say their name, but I've covered this up now. So the student section really mirrors my teacher section. So it has the same units in there and it also has an assessment folder plus some, some extra bits. So whenever I create work, I prepare it in my, let's say unit five, and then I hand it out for it to go into the student's unit five, which is also called home. So there are two copies on there, one in my folder, and then one in each of the students. So student one will have one, student two, and so on, and they can write on their own version of it. Um, so um, this one, so this is Helen's version. So as you can see here, hers, um, wait, sorry, I need to go into um, presentation mode here, make it a bit bigger, bigger. Okay, so Helen, well, do you want to talk about it yourself maybe? Well, I've, this is back in April. I have actually changed it a bit, I should have told, but yeah, basically within the content, I've got a place where they can go for lessons once I've distributed the lessons and they've got their own version. Only after I've distributed do I then put a backlog of lessons there so they can always go and collect them there if for any reason they didn't get them i mean the others are just self-explanatory really that's where it's places where they can go reference for example has got how to do accents that sort of thing i guess the advantage of having it in the content library is that if you have students who join the class new they can then go into the um, yeah, content that. library and they can take out all the lessons they've missed so far yeah. Why would me, I, because it's in the teacher only area, I would have to then hand them all out. Mm -hmm. um, I only put them there once it has been distributed because I yeah. don't have any confusion. So, mm. yeah. Okay. So, and so oh, sorry, but I suppose the, the yeah. thing is seeing how I, that's how I name my pages and I still do that because I rigorously just go through a book which I really like, which is Studio. It tends to be just, you know, now it tends to be the, the date. And then, um, actually, I have changed that now. I do pages and then the unit. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, so I guess in your student section, does it also just say lesson, lessons and exam resources, or is it broken down by unit? I have unit to say, I, I have changed this a bit, but certainly the yeah, student bit, reflect, I think what you're talking about, reflecting the name mm. of the content area. So to have the same, yeah. if you teach your content, your, your student, I would say that's a good a good thing. Mm, yeah. Okay. So this one is from uh, Jane's uh, blog. So she uh, let me copy this. And well, Jane has been using this for a bit longer because she's also working in a school where the students all have iPads. So she's been working on it for a few years. Uh, she did say she has also changed this a little bit. Um, but I think you can see that she really spent quite a lot of time on really organizing it, numbering her sections and so on. So I think this is what she has in her content library and the same structure in each of the students' books as well. So and each I think of her them then will have, yeah. Her recommendation also is it's really good if you're going to have section groups, do that from the beginning. It mm. can be quite difficult to do that later on. So, and mm. that's where she's obviously got lots of, have you said, as you say, she's got more hierarchy, hasn't she, of a section yeah. group and mm. then sections and then the pages. Yeah, I thought that through from the outset. Mm. I wish yeah. I had. 
I mean, you can, if you want to, you can go onto her blog later on and read um, her explanation of this as well. Um, I mean, she she said she has actually changed it again. So I think, well, like with every worksheet, it kind of evolves every year, doesn't it? Or you, the way you present, um, we always make little tweaks to it and it changes a bit over time. Okay, then um, my next one, uh, so this is my colleague, Chloe. So you can see her main difference is that she names them lesson one, lesson two, lesson three. So that's also quite a good way. Um, at least then the students know which order they need to go in mm -hmm. instead of having the date. And actually it makes it much easier for next year when we're still using OneNote because she doesn't then have to change the title because she doesn't have to date in it. Um, but she does actually have to date on the page so she still has to change it there. But at least the titles are still the same. Um, and so in her students' books, they have their own vocab book um, so they can annotate Julia, it. Like stories. Uh, yeah. Could you go through the distribution work? Some people like to, you know, they need, they need yeah. to, and they would like to have another goal. You can just show very quickly how you distribute. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Shall I go back to that? Sorry about that. Um, just, no, that's okay. It's actually quite important. Yeah. Let's let's show this. I, at least I've show, um, I might come back and show some other examples. But so if you want to hand out a page to all the students, um, you go to wherever you've prepared it. So in your content library or in your teacher only area. So let's say you want all your students to have this vocab list and have their own copy to write on it. At the top here, so make sure you're in class notebook and then distribute page. And there are lots of different options. If you just want to hand it out to this class, you go to distribute page, the top one. And can I say there as well, yeah. some people get confused because it says group distribution. And I found a lot of people thought, oh, I want mm. to distribute it to the group. Yeah. And that's just that you mm. can, if you want to, choose, select a particular group who's going to get it. So just to know it's that very top yeah. one, not group. <laughs> yeah. So group means if you have subgroups in within your class, basically, I think. Okay, but I want to give it to everyone in this class. So I go to distribute page and then at the side here, it comes up and it now shows me all the sections that I have. Ah, well, we can see it has created the unit one and unit two that I wanted to create earlier. It just hasn't shown up here yet, but it has created them. So I can decide where do I want it. So let's say this is for unit one. Let's see if we will create those units as well. And as I go, now it takes a little bit depending how big the page is and how many students you've got, but I've only got three students, so it should be quite quick. And the great thing is it should appear straight away. So half of the time I forget to hand out my pages. Um, and luckily I don't have to run to the copier anymore, but I can just quickly go to distribute page mm -hmm. and within a second it will appear. Um, but it still hasn't created these stupid sections. Uh, well, I was hoping they would come up once I distribute a page to it. <laughs> Let's try that again. Let's put it in somewhere else where it's more visible. We're trying um, to actually do a section. <laughs> Let's go back to uh, let's let's hand out something in word order and we put it into the class notes. There we go. Let's do that. <coughs> okay. So let's check if they got this one. Uh, where did I put it? In class notes. class notes. There we go. Okay, bing, there it is. Okay, so word order. So this is Antonio's copy. I can check. So Chloe here. Yeah, here's Chloe's copy. There we go. And uh, Antonio and Chloe could now start writing on this. <laughs> and I could see it as they're doing it, what they are scribbling. Oh, they've put some red lines there so I can see it. You can also use review student work, um, just really quickly, but maybe we'll go into more detail next time. But when you want to check all their work, you go to review student work. Now you choose where did you put it, which folder is it in, which section. So in this case, class notes, uh, no, wait, uh, yeah, class notes. Next, then it's asking which page do you want to check? Well, in this case, I've only got one in there, namely the word order, so I want to check that one. And now it shows me a list of all my students. So I can click on the first one. Okay, here's Antonio's page. Then I click, 
click on Chloe, and it takes me to the same page in her folder. So it makes it much easier that you don't have to um, click through all the folders and try to find where it is. You can just uh, use review work to check the same work on each student. And um, as I shared on Twitter earlier, actually another good trick is also to use search because it can even search within um, screenshots. So if I look for a word like uh, coordinating, coordinating, um, and I change it to just in this team. So it's also showed me, oh, the word coordinating is on the page word order in Antonio's book, in Chloe's book, and so on. And it will jump straight there. You can see it highlighted it. Even though this is a, a screenshot, really, it has still found it, which is quite amazing. Uh, and this way, it makes it much easier as if it's at the bottom of the page. So I don't have to scroll through it all. So let's say I want to see that summary for all of them. Oops, uh, then it will jump straight to the summary at the bottom of the page and make it super quick to check if they've done the work or not. Can I point out as well yeah. that in order to get um, this menu of distribute review, you must click on the word class notebook. Yeah. That again has been the yeah. most common thing I've found staff yeah. saying, where is it? I don't know how to do it. And yeah. it's because your natural thing is that normally if you could just click on home, home is normally the one that you're you're on. Yeah. And if, if you click then now just to show what the difference is, is that all right, Julia? Yeah. So home is more home. the oh, editing it. things. Yeah. It's because when they first made class notebook, well, when they first made OneNote, it wasn't really meant for school, I think it was made for anyone, for businesses, for universities, and so on. So it didn't really have that class notebook uh, tab built in from the beginning, and you had to download it uh, originally. But now, with lockdown, obviously, lots of people are using it. So um, they they have it built in now. Um, but yeah, so home is just for creating things, for taking notes. And um, so it's very, so, well, home and insert is very similar to word really kind of the same things like a table and so on um draw is more if you're using this on a mini uh, on a interactive whiteboard so you could use this instead of powerpoint or instead of your interactive whiteboard you can write straight onto your one note which um can i've I done just, as well can i just say julia that yeah. because of the draw thing what i do is when i'm presenting to the kids in through mm. I share my screen and I present through OneNote because mm. the PowerPoints and everything is there that I have my digital pen and I write on it that yeah. I can use the chat, all the vocab is there and the kids just can then take that and take a photograph of that, well not a photograph, just copy the page into their own area. So I think it's very, very, very useful because the board in Teams, I find it is very slow. It doesn't mm. sync very good, the whiteboard. The, whatever yeah. you teams. Um, so I use this all the time. Uh, yeah. So you, mean you create an empty page. This yeah, is what I you mean. Do. And you just let you just write on it, blah, blah, blah. I, I do that. Blah. It's related to any of the work that we're doing, like PowerPoint. My PowerPoint is there yeah. and I write to yeah. the side. Yeah. Because it still is big enough to have, yeah, you can still can see the word, the PowerPoint yeah. and the words for the side. Yeah. Just, I yeah. mean, for, yeah. The problem with, I mean, for that, you need to have a touch screen or a, a, an iPad really. Yes, you need a oh, yeah. computer, which I have. So I'm very yeah. lucky. And I have yeah. I do the same. I've got a Surface yeah. Pro and I just yeah. teach on that and literally just, just use OneNote pretty much. Yeah. That it works the best if you have a, a device like that where you can actually write on it. But if you're on a screen, uh, well, if you are on a computer with a mouse like I'm now, I mean you can still use the highlight and so on, but writing as you can see uh gets a bit <laughs> maybe yeah. Sorry, Not, that worked. You got a um, But that's why I mean, when you're back in school, you could use this to write on an on an interactive whiteboard. Um, yeah, if you haven't got an iPad or a Pro. That's what I, I used to do when we were in the school. I used to use my interactive whiteboard and all the notes mm. were there. And I never had the kids didn't have to take the phone before you should take a phone and take a photo by level students. Not anymore because it's in the one note. Yeah, exactly. You can just copy it over. And that's nice when you're working all together on a on a um, mind map, for example, and just one person writes it all down, and then you can just create a copy of it for all of them. 
and just copy it over into their books. Yeah. I think that's brilliant. I don't know whether there's, I mean, in a way you've now covered, haven't you, the basics. Is there anything mm. else that is a basic that you feel we should have covered or should we leave this to the next session? Yeah, I think uh, because we're already running over so much, I mean, there's a lot more to talk about, <laughs> but um, yeah. But I, are... I mean, honestly, I think, Julia, you've done brilliantly there because I know that, um, you know, we, we put some preparation, didn't we, into making it that it was just the basics. And it's, it's very, t mm. there's so much more that people want to ask about. So I can mm. see that we definitely, we've, we've earmarked another session to go through the basics. And I'm sure after then we could have others, which would be for people, you know, for other things, really. Uh, yeah. Loads and loads. And also there's loads of experience I can see from people who are mm. on here. So please, once again, I'd say if you can offer to help others or come along or present to things at this session, um, that, that would be great. Um, yeah. but I really feel, Julie, you've done brilliantly there. We now know how to set it up, how to set up our sections. And also we know the basics of the management of distributing and reviewing. And there's an awful lot more than yeah. we talk about the way you put your page. Also, there's a lot to talk about how this then interacts with assignments because their question was, yeah. was are they alerted when you do a new page? Well, no, they're not. But if you were to set it for an assignment, yeah. you could. So I think there's yeah. quite a lot more that we could we could look at there. So, yeah. And it could even be that we say we, we set up some sort of page where people can write their questions as people have got a question. So we know that that's what we're going to be dealing with. But yeah. So yeah. if I could ask everybody to round of applause to Julia. Really great, really good. And... Yeah, shall I have, can I ask for a picture of people, if anybody's here, if they don't mind showing their webcam, it'd be quite nice to have a little class, a class photo. So lots and lots of comments there. Lots of people talking about, yes, assignments. Mm -hmm. um, very happy to. And, and of yeah, course, sorry, I didn't oh, get to the didn't, more didn't, advanced ones. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> okay, so let's go for a nice picture and cheese. One, two, three. Thank you. And go to the next page as well, because there is another page. Um, really, lots of people came along. That was that was lovely. It was really you've really helped loads of people there. So ah, uh, yeah, it's just the point where I could ask people for a favor. Oh yes. Yeah. Um, so um I don't know if you're aware, but on there's a website called education.microsoft, which I really recommend. And they have lots and lots of online courses on there that you can do for free. Um, and they have text and video. And uh, each time you do one of the courses, so they're about different topics like PowerPoint, OneNote, Class Notebook, and so on. And you can collect points. And it, when you've got, uh, I think, a thousand points, then you get a nice little Microsoft badge that you're a Microsoft educator, um, which you can then put on your Twitter handle or send to your head of department and say, oh, look, I'm a Microsoft educator and so on. And then there are different levels of it. And I'm working on the getting the trainer badge. But for that, um, I need people to put in a code into Microsoft. So if I could, it's up on the very last page of the PowerPoint as well. But if I could chuck this into the chat as well, it would be really helpful um, if um, some of you could type in this code into the Microsoft page. And then while you're there, you can also um, explore the page a bit, which um, yeah, it's definitely very good if you're getting started with, with OneNote. Some of the courses are a little bit out of date. So their, their OneNote has already changed quite a bit. So um, try to use one of the, the newer courses there. But if you just type in OneNote there, then you will find a lot as well. Uh, sorry, I put it in chat. And then no, what I'll do is go. if I um I put the, the page there for you, Julia, or you already have as well. Ah, okay. Yeah. So Thank if you. I send yes, and here, here are the instructions on how to put the code, and that would be very helpful. Thank you. I'll include that in the email that I sent to everyone with a link to bits and pieces. If we link to the PowerPoint and the bits that have been recorded. Oh, I stopped recording, sorry. <laughs> Stop recording now. Um